have the floor as well. The budget doesn't, hasn't allowed us to do that yet. And um, so the, the construction site that we have now that we use for the safety research has all of these scaffolding and, and equipment and things moving around. I, I'll show you in a while and that will prove me about that. Um, but then we also have uh, uh, the interior of the building for the uh, construction uh, productivity research where, and I'll show you this at the end, where you can go in and, and you can move things around and you can build and you can actually work in, in this virtual site. And uh, so, and, and some of the things, I mean a lot of the, inspir a lot of the work, and especially this first one that I'll show you, has its origins in the work that we've done for the handbook because uh, with Chuck and with the, especially with the Precast Concrete Institute, we've worked in, since 2001 on the idea of how to exchange information among applications. And um, when we first began with Precast Concrete Institute in the United States, they said, oh, we want to do modeling and we want to exchange between the architect and the engineer and the factories and the site. And we came along and we said, okay, what information do you want to exchange? And they said, oh, we use AutoCAD, we have all these drawings. And we said, but you have to model it before you can exchange information, otherwise there's nothing to exchange. So we spent the first four or five years working on developing the, the parametric modeling systems for precast so they would have what to exchange. And now, now we have very good parametric modeling. We have Tecla and even Revit now has some tools, but especially Tecla has very good modeling for precast concrete, for reinforced concrete, for steel. So in the last four years or five years, we've been working on the interoperability. But let me show you a little bit about this. This is uh, Michael's work. Um, his project focuses on uh, rule checking of designs. But it's not only about rule checking. There's a very fundamental part before you can check the rules is you have to have rich information. And the models have to be meaningful. And not only do they have to be meaningful, they have to be done in a way that the rule checking software can read and can interpret correctly. And uh, our experience has been that most IFC export uh, routines from the regular software like Revit or Archicad or whatever, you, you don't get very much. You get IFC files and you can see the models, you can visualize them, but they don't have a lot of semantic content. And so really the problem is really about how to take that content and enrich it with meaning and then do the rule check. But if you can do the enrichment, you can also do exchange between different stuff. So it's really about the exchange. So I'll, I'll talk about a bit of the background and the case study and some of the methodology and so on. So our motivation for doing this work is are the problems of interoperability and, and how to evaluate models. Both of them require semantically or meaningful rich models. IFC is the accepted standard, but the problem is that IFC doesn't have specific requirements. When you go to the specifications for IFC, if you are, let's imagine you're a software company, you're Autodesk, and you go to the IFC specifications and you say, okay, I have such and such things in my software, I can do walls and roofs and so on, how should I export them in, in Revit? And so, for example, if you have a wall that has blocks and plaster and paint and something else on the inside, maybe some drywall and insulation, so you have a, a multi-layered wall. Nowadays, Revit can't export that. If you do an IFC export, you get one IFC wall and nothing much more. Uh, so, it sh so it's not working the way it should because it's ha nobody has sat down to define that extra layer of meaning. In the United States, they have this uh, national BIM standard that there is a, an organization called the National Institute of Building Sciences, and they're to, trying to develop this national BIM standard. And what the BIM standard is all about is to go to, say, uh, steel construction, reinforced concrete, uh, housing, factories, shops, whatever, different domains, and for each of them to say, when you exchange information about this type of building in IFC, how should you do it? And that, so there is a big project called uh, you know, IFC Solutions Factory, and they're sitting down and they're trying to define the, all the information in very fine detail. And then to specify for each concept how it should be in IFC. Trouble is that it takes a lot of work to do that for all the software companies, because it means they have to write 
specific export functions for each kind of building and, it, and for each domain and for each stage in the process. And it also means that they require whoever's building the BIM model to do it in a specific way. So uh, if I want to check uh, a building against the program and I want to say, uh, did the designer provide all the spaces that the owner wanted? I have some brief or program and I have, I need a 30 square meters for a bedroom or whatever. I want to be able to check the model if it provides that for the whole building. Um, I can only do that if the designer in Revit, for example, added a space or an area object or in whatever software. And if they didn't do that and connect it to the walls and then export it, I won't get an IFC export that's useful. So it puts a lot of work not only on the software companies but also on the designers, on the models. So what we did was we said, that this is the hypothesis, instead of putting the, putting the work on the exporter, let's see if we can put the work on the importer. So to be broadly practical, the rule systems should be generic as far as possible. They should be specific. And they should be able to use building model export files from authoring tools as they input. And here's the important part, applying their own interpretation of semantics as needed. And so the hypothesis is that we can develop an intelligent method to derive a semantically useful model as needed from the explicit information and the implicit information in any given IFC building model. Let me translate that into English. What it means is, think of it this way. If, if you go to a computer and you look at a model of a house, um, you're, all you're seeing, you're seeing the image, you're seeing the geometry, you're not seeing the, the information. You're not seeing that it's a wall and concrete and all this stuff. But if I were to show you that those images and let you manipulate it to move around and maybe do a section and stuff, you would know which is, say it's a house, you would immediately know which is the bedroom, and you would know which is the bathroom, and the lounge, and whatever. And how would you know that? Because as humans, we interpret what we see. And we, to interpret that information, although I only see geometry, I interpret a lot of semantic meaning into it. And I can do that because I'm used to it, and I, have, I can use intelligence. And I have some rules about how to do that. Um, so the idea is to say, can we go to human beings, experts, and ask them, if I show you this model or this model with some information, and it's not what we have in the IFC file, no matter where it's exported from, we do have all the geometry. But, and we have more than the geometry, because we do know what walls and beams and columns, and we have that at least. And we also know sometimes the, the material it's made of. So the idea is to say, can we go to human experts, interview them, understand the rules by how they interpret what they see, and then put those rules in an artificial intelligent software and do using an expert system, and then we can have a system that says, I am a rule checking system for checking um, uh, I don't know, hospitals. Does the design meet the requirements? So if I know the rules for interpreting the, the, the hospital model, then I can add the information about where is a bedroom, where is a ward, where is an operating room, where is this and that, and then I can operate the rules without demanding from the user, from the designer, any special way of working. And without having any kind of uh, information delivery manual or all these other things prepared. And I don't need to ask Autodesk or somebody else to do something special. I can just interpret it. So that's the goal. And uh, what it means is that you, you, you have to work with ontology, so you have to work with uh, defining all the objects that you have. And the idea is that the IFC itself is an ontology, it means that it has a dictionary of terms, it has some objects that it understands. The same thing for an expert, if I come to an expert in hospital design, then they, they work with a certain set of terms, and names of spaces of, of objects. But, and then the rules and the codes, like the design codes, also have a certain set of terms. So what we would need to do is find out, who, well, essentially do the mapping between these three to relate the terms one to the other. And if we can do that, I mean, I, this is just a bit of background on IFC. Is everyone familiar with IFCs, or at least a little bit? Okay, so 
I don't need to wait on this. And, and this just has, says something about the problems that we have with IFC right now. And the, the, uh, the information exchange is problematic. Inadequate interoperability is a waste and added cost. There is a very good uh, report from, the, from NIST in Washington about inadequate interoperability, and everybody always quotes from it a very big number of costs to the United States economy every year that people can't exchange information. It's a, it's, it's, mm. Is a report from where? From NIST. NIST is the National uh, Institute of Standards. Mm -hmm. in, uh, I think, uh, I, I don't remember the name of the author, but I mean, of course, that I have. They quote a figure of 15 point something billion dollars every year in the United States. It's extra cost because of wasted remodeling or rebuilding information when you can't exchange software to software. But the, the truth is it's closer to three or four billion because they have some other factors in there. But, but people prefer to quote, if you, want to, if you want to get research funding for interoperability, then it's better to say that it costs 16 billion dollars than four billion dollars. But it's still, it, it's a major problem. And uh, so, and this tells a bit about the national debt standard. In terms of the software that exists for, for checking models, there are these four uh, systems that are available. Not only Celebrity, but there's another one from Finland called Jotney, and then there's Fornax and, and Smart Pros. And there are, uh, when we talk about this checking of models, there are also um, at least five <coughs> significant projects that have tried to do this. The one in Singapore is, is actually quite basic. It's, they've taken some of the rules and they've hard-coded them. So you, you really have to build the model very specifically and you can only check very specific rules. So that's what you, call, you could call the, the brute force approach. And, and they've had it for a while. Startspace is a big... A real estate company in uh, Norway, and they uh, build, it's like the GSA in the United States, they build all the buildings for the government. And so they, they're doing some really good things, but you see here also spatial requirements and accessibility, which repeats itself for all, because those are, they're quite simple topics for checking. Mm -hmm. You can check if there are doors to go to different rooms for, for handicapped people, uh, and the same with uh, spatial requirements. It's quite, it's relatively easy to check whether the spaces meet the design brief of the owner. Um, to do more complex things, it's going to take a lot longer, and this project is still, it's going to take a very long time. Because yeah, they're trying to do the, all the building codes across the United States, and there's a big variety of them. Um, I'm going to skip this a little bit about uh, artificial intelligence and the techno technology that 